everyone, it's me, Katie Beth again. And today I wanted to show some of the self-defense keychains that I've been making. If you've been to some of the craft fairs that I've gone to, you've probably seen these already. So I left these all in a box squished together with other stuff, and they've kind of bent a little. Which segues into what I wanted to talk about today. I wanted to show everyone how they can make their own, if that's what they wanted to do, and some of the things to uh, do, and of course not to do, that I've learned with these. <laughs> so first off, starting with these self-defense keychains, and they're just little keychains, so it just looks like a cute little puppy dog, but if you need to, you have a stabber to help defend yourself. So I start off with the silicone molds, and then you just use the two-part epoxy like that people use for covering their cup tumblers or making different resin epoxy stuff. So some of the things that I've learned with making these, learned, learned, learned with making these, is that you really need to be careful of what additives you're putting into the epoxy. And it's funny because some of the stuff came with some of the resin that I bought and it just makes it completely unbendable. And I don't know if maybe I, maybe I didn't mix quite right with the, correct ratio but I feel like I use the same base and then just put them in different cups and put different coloring in and this pink one super cute it's the pink shimmer dust that one of the epoxies came with but when it dried it's completely flexible which is especially funny with this here unicorn that I have because it's from the same epoxy base. I just poured them in different cups to put the different coloring in. And I had the brown shimmer, and that is perfectly hard, exactly what I want it to be. But the pink shimmer, again, with the same, came from the same batch, it's flexible. Which, for the purpose of a self-defense keychain, kind of defeats the purpose if you want it for a quick stabby and it just bins. But as I'm noticing right now, it still catches the ears. So at least there's that. But I don't think this is one I'll be selling just because you want that horn to be stiff and it's just a movable thing. But again, watch, the ears still get you. So again, you want to be careful about what additives you're using. Um, This one, I obviously did a weird I don't know I guess I had a weird batch mix on it it's the clear but it came out very bubbly so maybe I just didn't uh, blow the hot air stuff on to get all the bubbles out correctly but it still works I still like it it's just one of the ones I haven't really given to anyone so, talking about the additives, so I think, I don't know if I used the same pink base. I feel like this is from a completely different batch, but again, I used the pink, and it, this is honestly two months old. It's, I've had it sitting in this mold for two months, which might actually ruin the mold, but it's just did not set. So I obviously did something wrong. So try not to make anything exactly right before you need it, just because, at least in my case, I really never know when I'm going to do something completely wrong and end up with something like this. And if I had needed, like, gifts to go out, and this was a gift, and then they all came out like this, I'd be very upset. So try to make everything before you absolutely actually need it. Okay, it is coming out better. It's still kind of sticky to the touch. Maybe I shouldn't be touching the wet epoxy without gloves. But this is after two months of being in the mold, so it's obviously not going to cure ever. So it's garbage. Uh, but it looks like I can save the mold. The mold looks like it's savable. And similarly, I made these coasters at the same time. Which is funny because it's the same time that I made these coasters. And these guys came out just fine. <laughs> And these ones are having that same kind of gunky thing. Where I'm really just going to need to peel this out and 
toss it away. Hopefully I can save the molds if I can get everything out of this. If anybody knows how to clean the gunk out of molds really easily to save them, I'd like to hear about that. Just putting that out there. But these ones I feel like because it's the same exact color, I think it was the same exact mix and I must have done something wrong with the ratio mix on these. Because they're so pretty, but they're going to be garbage because they never cured. And again, it's been two months with these guys too. So I just had to take a little hand washing break after touching all of the non-cured epoxy stuff. So another thing I wanted to talk about with the keychains is placement for where you're going to put the keychain. Um, a lot of them come with the hole already to put them in. And I like to have these type of keychains with the clip off so that if it's attached to your purse or bag, you don't have to carry the entire purse or bag around in your hand with you. If you need to, you can just clip it off and already have it in your hand and ready to go. So if you can get the kind of keychains that have a claw on them, just so you can have easy access to them. If it had this type of keychain on both sides or was permanently attached to it, if you have it on your backpack, you'd have to carry your entire backpack around with you just to get it in a fighting position in your hand. Another thing I've noticed with these is, is if I leave them all together and smush down by heavy weight, they do tend to bend a little. Uh, this one's still kind of straight, but like the blue one, it's kind of got a weird curve to it because I think I had them all at the bottom of a bin crushed by a bunch of decoration stuff. So it started to bend. But it seems like I can maybe bend it back. So just watch out how you're storing them. If it's on the end of your purse or whatnot, it's probably just hanging and fine. But if it's on the end of your purse and you have it smushed and left somewhere for a really long time, uh, even though it's cured and hard, it might bend a little. So kind of watch out for that. Uh, the other thing is that some of the keychains don't have the hole in them already for you to put the keychain. So you can either one, try and screw in a little hole. Let me try to find those examples. So I can't seem to find my examples of the keychains that didn't have the pre-drilled hole in them, but I'll just talk you through it so you know for the future. So some of them didn't have the pre-drilled hole and so I tried to use the little, uh, the little hook and eye that the keychain sets come with. And so I thought if I screwed them in, they would just dry in there and be fine. But I tried it when it was completely dry already and it just, after an hour or so, it chipped the resin and the hook and eye just came right out. I tried it when it wasn't completely dry because I thought it would be in there to dry with it and it's still within a day or so the resin chipped and the hook and eye fell out. So I don't recommend using the hook and eye drilling system to get keychains in there. For me, all of them that I tried broke. But also, if you know how to do that and there's a way that I just had been missing, feel free to tell me about that in the comments or when you see me, tell me about it. So the solution that I came with, came out with, was just to put the hook around the eye. So pretend it doesn't have that hole. Uh, instead of drilling a hole in, which would also be weird for the hand, but because the drilled holes kept breaking, I found that just putting them through the eyes of the keychain made it pretty simple, so it still works. So if I need to get it disconnected really quickly, I can just disconnect it. And it still keeps it fairly out of the way that if I wanna put my hands in it and leave it on there, it's still not a bother. So that was a quick rundown of all of the lessons that I learned while making these self-defense keychains to pass on to you when you make yours if you want to. Uh, I don't remember if I covered where I got the molds from. I got them all from Amazon and they come in different packs, different prices with a different combination of different types of keychain molds, but they're not too expensive. The most expensive part of making the keychains is probably the resin. 
The resin, especially if you get it from Michael's or Joanne's full price, is pretty expensive. I don't, haven't found any cheap resins that I like to recommend yet. And I'm actually probably going to be moving to a more expensive resin, just because it seems to be food safe and I think I can paint more cups with it. So that's coming in the future. Well, that's about all. If I didn't answer any questions and you want the questions answered, just ask me in the comments below. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for being here again this week as we talk about self-defense keychains. And I also have a lot more self-defense stuff. I'm really into this, uh, I believe it's called, someone at a craft fair told me it was called Everyday Carry. The everyday things you carry for self-defense. really into them, so I want to do more of that in the future. Again, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks for watching, everyone, and have a great rest of your day.